Yeah, and then, hey you, everyone. Uh, hope you had a nice break. Next up is JLS Gangwish. Um, in 2023, JLS Gangwish presented, presented Strange Light, a, 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 an extended reality experience at the festival, International Festival of Arts and Ideas in New Haven, USA. Uh, for this project, he created a tool that imports and animates volumetric videos in Godot, and he came all the way from America to Munich to show these tools to us today. So let's welcome him to the stage. Howdy. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you so much to all the organizers of this event. Thank you so much for the developers who make Godot possible. And thank you so much to the University of Hartford for helping me be here. Uh, I'm Gels Gangwish. You can call me or Jeffrey or JLS. I am an artist and educator from New Haven, Connecticut. I am an assistant professor of foundations at the Hartford Art School. As part of that, I teach introduction to creative coding and 3D modeling and 3D world building and virtual and extended reality installation to uh, first year college students. And Godot has made that much easier than it was before I found Godot. GD Script is so intuitive to use. It is more versatile as a platform than things like processing or P5 which are what I used to start my students with. I am just thrilled to have this tool for education. I am one of the three members of the Strikeware Art Collective with Christopher Koitsar in Vermont and Molly Bendel in Maryland. Uh, we have some things coming up that I hope you'll follow us on Instagram and check us out coming next year. But today I wanted to talk about the volumetric video scripts that I made for Strange Lights being bubblicious. In February, a curator in New Haven put me together with a filmmaker from Hong Kong named Kit Hung, who had this uh, deadline of the International Festival of Arts and Ideas, a month-long festival mostly outdoor, that happens in New Haven, Connecticut every year. Uh, he wanted to expand beyond his normal documentary and narrative filmmaking to create a extended reality, just virtual reality at the time, but it became an extended reality documentary project. He originally was going to have it be about himself, but he befriended Bubbles, who we'll meet in a moment, or Kit will introduce in a moment. We went, we had a very short turnaround for this project. We met in February, it was due in June. Uh, we're hoping to polish it up and release it more properly. At the moment, I have an APK file that'll run on a Quest 2. If anybody would like to experience it, I'd be happy to share it. And in the beginning and end of this slideshow, I have some documentation from that experience. I would like to let you meet Kit Hung. Hello everyone, my name is Kit Hong, a queer filmmaker from Hong Kong, currently living in London. I want to thank you all of you for having me today. I got to know JSL Jeffrey through our collaborative Strange Light, which is a VR experience recreated about a black transgender drag performer living with a disability. I met Bubble in February 2023 during a cabaret show. She took the stage with her wheelchair and delivered an incredible performance. After a few meetings, Jeffrey and I decided to feature her in our VR project. We invite our participants to experience her life journey from growing up as a brown boy to becoming a drag performer and understanding how she found the energy to perform despite of her disabilities. My background is primarily in traditional filmmaking and storytelling. Most of my film have been shown in cinema and on TV. Working in a VR environment, which offer immersive storytelling, was a complete new experience for me. In this project, my main role was to create the narrative and the storytelling by having a lot of interviews 
and sharing with bubbles. I describe potential experience to Jeffrey and engage in discussions to explore the possibility and experiment with the technology. Jeffrey then went on to adopt the script into a VR environment. It was an incredible experience working on this project, especially in realizing that Bubble Story can reach the audience through a different dimension. Now I'd like to hand over the time back to Jeffrey and to continue the presentation. Once again, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Hello everyone. My so coming up to this project, I too had a background as a filmmaker uh, many years ago before I started working in visual arts. And I had done several XR, VR and AR art installations, both with Strikeware and individually. But I had never tried to tell a more cohesive narrative over time which was a challenge. We really didn't want to use 3D model animations because of this disturbing, uncanny valley situation. And, and we really wanted to do a, some sort of live capture to try to create some sort of human connective experience inside the headset. So we were really inspired by these two projects, uh, which were all in the Morning You Wake was made just when we were starting, I think, and Queer Skin's arc a year or two before. Both use volumetric video capture from very sophisticated studios with very sophisticated teams building them. We had a month and a connect. <laughs> so we, I initially tried to build the project in Unity. Unity has some built-in tools for Alembic uh, mesh animations, but they wouldn't work on the Quest 2, which was the platform we were exporting to. And any plugins I found would crash immediately with the amount of data I was trying to feed into them. We did find this Breckle capture software. I've yet to figure out a way to capture the data straight into Godot from the Connect, but I'm hoping to solve that soon because this has become a regular workflow for me. But Breckle is an amazing piece of software. Uh, there's a whole suite of motion capture and point cloud capture softwares from Breckle.com. I hope you'll check them out. Um, this one was the point cloud version 3, which is still in beta. And you can see Kit and I working in the room with where our little connects are stationed. So that's what the, the raw capture looks like. Hi there. This is Welcome. the, I'll just go back to make it stop for a second. This is just the first 30 seconds of our documentary where you meet a kind of ghost of bubbles and have to take her hand while you go on the journey with her. So we'll watch that for 30 seconds. Hi there. Welcome. My name is Bubblicious. You can call me Bubbles. Thank you for joining me today. I want to share my story with you. Are you ready to step into my shoes? Give me your hand. Give me your, come on, give me your hand. Give me your, come on, give me your hand. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I like I said, I tried to start this project in Unity a few times and couldn't get it off the ground. I was, I'm was i not, by any stretch, an expert programmer. I am totally self-taught and an utter hack. And so I, I didn't know C Sharp well enough to fix the problems I was having. And while Unity always been my go-to for XR or AR things because of the built-in tools, Godot 4.0 had just came out, and I thought it would be a nice way to learn it and learn, learn any scripting updates. And Godot makes everything really accessible. So I was able to sort of reverse engineer an import process, which I will walk, which I have now made available on the Asset Store. And we can, oh, thanks. Oh. Yeah, so if we go over to the Asset Store, am I connected to the internet? Yeah, well, I have a 
video of it, just in case that happened. <laughs> um, so, video of it. If you go to the App Store and type in Point Cloud, you'll find my little collection of scripts. Asset Library, type in Point Cloud, and that's me. And it'll ask you to download, and you do. I'm sure we've all done this once or twice. Once you get that far, there are two folders, an animated folder and a static folder. The animated folder asks you to load a directory. And if you export any, right now it works with PLY or XYZ files. So if you have individual frames of these animations, then this importer can collect them. You need to know they need to be numbered by the end, and you need to know what frames you're capturing. So here I capture frames 100 to 200. And then you click import like a button. And there might be a better way to do all this. This is just what I was able to figure out in a month. And it takes a very long time to import each frame. Uh, I speed it up five times in a moment, so we don't need to wait through it all. Oh, importantly, on the top left, you'll see that there is a CPU point, cla point CPU particle node with a just a node child. The child is the loader, and that's what's running this script right now. So it's just loading all the Virtus information and all the RGB information into arrays, and then you can click on the parent node and click import, and it grabs them all from the child. And at this point, you can delete the loader. It's no longer important. Once you click playing, it'll start flickering little particles, but you also need to change the amount. I was using 10 or 20,000 uh, particles for these videos. Now, my screen capture software started messing with my laptop, but after my slideshow, I can show you that it doesn't stutter like this live. Uh, same thing with the, the captures from the inside the Quest headset at all. The capture software is what makes the video stutter. It's much more performant in real life. So that's, the, that's one connect, broadcasting a room. Uh, we would line up four of those to capture around any subject we were using and then play with them through various levels of abstraction for the production. I also used a lot of, a lot of my own practice comes from scanning figure models and using that data in different ways. And so I, we scanned everything and used those meshes throughout the project and some of them I wanted to look like point cloud. So I also made this quick little point cloud converter with a CPU point cloud, CPU particle node. You can drop any mesh into that source mesh slot and it'll make a point cloud of it. This is one project I did shortly after. Uh, this was for the Light Ekfrastic, which is a digital journal run out of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, that pairs artists with poets and give you a month to make a new piece of work. So this is the first of many things that I'm working on with volumetric video. Uh, this is a sort of generative video loop screensaver, more or less. And that's really my talk. That was a little fast. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> does anyone have any questions about volumetric video, XR, anything? Hi. So, mm, okay. So you um, said that for capturing the subject, you used four connects and you were, had them all uh, pointed. How did you line up those four? Uh, the, those, the, the four pieces of data that you captured and synchronized them into one? With great difficulty. Um, <laughs> the Breckel software does have some built-in features to make that easier, but I found I was unable to make them work. It has marker situations you can lay out on the floor. It has marker situations you can wave in front of all connects. It has tools to align them. I didn't find any of that worked. So what I 
did was I ended up exporting them individually into Godot and then lining up the Node 3Ds. Godot had really versatile 3D manipulation tools. So Node 3Ds are great. Why, why did you use the CPU particles? Did you try the GPU once or it has some problems or...? That is an excellent question. I could not, for the life, I spent a long time trying, and I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to get the data. I think that just has a lot more to do with me being an amateur programmer. I understand that there is no. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh yes, the question was why didn't I use GPU particles? And oh, what you commented um, that it wouldn't make a difference anyway. May I ask you? It wouldn't make a difference because the source of the data that needs to be played back will come from the CPU anyway. The GPU particles are used when you need to generate the data from the GPU. So it wouldn't make a difference in this case. It's still a multi-mesh in both cases. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sorry, I muted that one. <laughs> Thank you, that's really helpful for me to know. Okay, any questions from this side? I, okay. So, uh, Great project, uh, really. Uh, I myself, I, I bought two Kinects in order maybe to do screen capture and and maybe uh, skeletal skeletal uh, motion capture. And uh, Breckel went uh, was something that went uh, that was publicized to do. Uh, I think there did you add issues because the Kinect camera, as much as it was like a camera that was forward thinking, but it's like. 15 years old now or 10 years old. So, uh, did you think about maybe if changing the camera would help? Uh, I don't know if. Uh oh, for my own work, my own personal work, I really like low resolution. I like really heavy artifacts, and and that I, I like playing yeah. with that lack of perfection. Uh, I did run a workshop with some students that were using a Zero Connects newer stuff at a higher resolution with better computers than I was using, and it seemed to work just as well uh, for this project, and especially for the mobile hardware we were running it on, lower resolution, I think, was a smarter choice than and with the time we had. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so um, have you been able to use four depth cameras with one Windows 10 system, or just like one is the head and three headless. No, all four run off my desktop. Uh, you I, should teach me that because yeah. I, 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 I have been using um, Breco body for motion capturing and he told me you should like, you know, be, because like one window system can only run one camera. So basically you have to like fo have four computers to do that and it's tiring. I found that to be true with the version two connect. The version one connect, you can run multiple so uh, we, we initially tried to do it all with Connect 2s, and that one, the driver, limits you. Okay, we have time for two more questions. I saw someone in the back there. Go there. Yes, I just wanted to send this forward because this guy has held his hand up before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, when capturing the performance, did you have to um, change or set up the environment to capture, say, specific parts of the room instead of like the whole room, like kind of like a green screen, but for the volumetric data? Yeah, I did uh, two different things. Uh, I, Breckel has a lot of built-in features to kind of capture, after it captures all the data, you can then export it in a variety of formats. I export it in PLY or XYZ. And when you export, it lets you isolate sections. And sometimes I even just ran another script to call the numbers from the arrays if they were out of the position bounds I wanted. Thank you. OK, one last question. Thank you for your talk. As uh, someone who's actually learned programming via processing, it's nice to know that people are now switching to Godot. Uh, my question Woo! is, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, my question is, because like this was a multimedia like installation and had audio, did the audio pen as well? And so, if so, how did you synchronize like the point cloud with the audio tracks? Oh, that is an excellent question. I 
end, I sidestep the issue by not having any lip sync. That's one of the reasons I really like the low resolution video. Um, they're more, the whole video experience is bubbles sort of talking at you. And so there's this uh, narrative voiceover explaining some of the things you're seeing while you're becoming bubbles yourself in the body. And the whole thing was, it definitely did pan. It was all spatial audio inside the Quest 2 headset. And yeah, so I, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. And processing in P5 are great and gifts to the world. Don't, don't get me wrong, but, but Godot just does everything so well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, up next will be the lightning talks. Uh, how I explained that uh, I will do in five minutes. Thank you all so much for being here.